All right, so it's time for the next puzzle. It's time once again to free the innocent man. So before we actually go look at the riddle, let's see just what crimes have been committed here. We have arson, murder, counterfeiting, if you'll look at it, come on James. Oh, how close do you have to be? Swindling. Bad camera angles. Thievery. And kidnapping. Okay, so yes, arson, murder, counterfeiting, swindling, thievery, and kidnapping. So, time to go actually look at the riddle. Dead men, dead men, swinging in a tree. How many dead men do you see? Tongue turned blue and face gone gray. Watch them as they twist and sway. Charming. The first one killed the butcher man, then cooked him in the frying pan, served him to his hungry guests, and gave them seconds on request. Uh, yeah, gruesome as that is, it boils down to murder. So, he's guilty. The next one, with his smile and sweets, stole poor children off the streets. To men who dressed unsavory, he sold them into slavery. So this would be kidnapping, basically stealing children. Breaking into a home at night, the thief he had a nasty fright, filled his foolish head with ale, woke in the morn in the county jail. So this one flat out labels the person as a thief, so we know the thief is guilty. The artist with his daunting skill tried his hand at painting bills, but caught in rain he was undone when the ink he'd used did start to run. So this would be the counterfeiter, trying to make fake money, but caught when the ink ran. With promises of great return, taking gold he did not earn, bundled it up out of sight, quietly slipped off into night. This would be the swindler, making great promises of what he can do with your money, and then just running away with it. Three houses into ashes burned, the sheriff with no place to turn, did spy a stranger to his town, locked him up and beat him down. Now this would be arson, if the stranger actually did it. However, there's no proof that he did. Therefore, the arsonist is innocent. Dead men, dead men, swinging in a tree, how many dead men do you see? Six feet long and six men wide, round their necks the noose be tied. So we need to pull the noose that corresponds with the arsonist, which would be this one. With that, we're done, and all that's left is to go back and get the key. And there we go. So, just a bit of a reload here to show what happens if you get this puzzle wrong since I'm sure some people want to see just what it does. This is definitely the wrong one to pull. So what happens? Seemingly no indication of anything gone wrong yet. Still nothing except a faceplant. A reward probably awaits in here. I've actually never seen this. I've read about it, but I've never seen what it does exactly. It didn't do anything? What? That's weird. I thought it was supposed to do something. Uh... I don't get it. That's bizarre. From what, I w from what I read, if you get this puzzle wrong, 
you're supposed to encounter a bunch of lying figures somewhere, so that's strange. I don't get that. Oh, now they're out here, I see. Yeah, you were waiting for me in ambush, and quite a few of you, huh? I think there is a maximum number of them that you can get running around, I think three at once. And I seem to have all three of them. Uh, never mind, there's four. And my, but they are spit happy. So, yeah, let that be a lesson to you. Get the puzzle right. So, now we come to Eddie. This one's kind of a risky one to go with the chainsaw. The first part's not so bad, really, so that much is quite doable. The small size of the room overall makes this possible. The chainsaw has surprisingly little stopping power against Eddie. But enough that it does the job. You will probably still get slugged a few times, though. There we go. So, yeah, the first part of the fight goes decently, at least, with the chainsaw. The controller is still throbbing, and it certainly doesn't help that I'm actually trying to stay somewhat unhealthy during this run. The second part of this fight... Uh... Yeah. This is where things really go pear-shaped with the chainsaw. The fact that he's all too happy to shoot you multiple times and punch you when he gets close... Uh... Yeah. Not a good mix, that. He can just so easily knock you out of using the chainsaw during this part of the fight that... It really doesn't go well. I mean, maybe if you're willing to go through, like, every first aid kit and ampule you have. But really, you want to use firearms for this battle and keep your distance. Besides, isn't Eddie supposed to get killed with an ice axe? Uh, yeah, ten points to whoever gets that reference. I mean, see, you can still hit him with it, but... It doesn't really... it's not a fair exchange of blows. <laughs> Probably on normal it's more doable, because I don't think Eddie is quite that fast on normal. so you can probably get in more hits with a chainsaw before he can punch you or shoot you. Surprisingly, I think his punches actually do a little bit more damage than the gunshots, actually. Now, if you can run around and catch him while he's reloading, that might work. is just such a spaz for someone of his particular size. Not making fun of you, I'm actually impressed. You'd think you could saw straight through the meat to get to him, but apparently not. So now he's just in hiding mode? What, maybe... Did he not reload and he's just running now? Ugh. It also doesn't help that I think James will actually target the meat sometimes. So there we go. It is doable with the chainsaw, but yeah, there are much better options. I mean, 
You saw how many first aid kits I had to go through for that. Definitely not worth the effort. I... I killed a... a human being. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you with the entire trip this time, but there is a difference with the boating mechanics now in hard difficulty mode that I wanted to point out here. You know how the PS2 controller has two different analog sticks? You have to use them together in order to row the boat now. To use the left oar, you have to spin the left stick counterclockwise. To use the right oar, you have to spin the right stick clockwise. And to go forward, you have to spin them both at the same time. This is such a bizarre, arbitrary change, and a rather annoying one. Uh, yeah, this is irritating. <laughs> Why they made this change, I don't really know, but there it is. If you just hold the sticks forward like you could on normal mode, it doesn't do anything. I don't know if this is actually moving me any faster or not. I don't really feel like it is. In fact, I feel like it's going slower. And I just <laughs> hit something on my keyboard while doing this. That is how awkward this is. Uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe it is moving faster? I know it has to let you haul butt at least to some degree, since they, uh, to get a 10-star ranking, they expect you to get through the boating segment so quick. Actually, I think that might have been faster than my original trip, so, uh, that's kind of surprising. Anyway, yeah, hotel. So here we are back in the hotel, and as theorized, the chainsaw does really well against the Abstract Daddy minor versions. Mainly due to how slow they are. Once you knock them down, they give you plenty of time to stomp them, so yeah, the chainsaw takes them down pretty well. All there is to that. So now, here in the hotel, we have a puzzle where once there was just a fetch quest. Back on easy riddle mode, the music boxes could go anywhere on here, it really didn't matter. But now, they have to go in particular spots. There's a rectangular indentation. There's a plate in front of the indentation, and something's engraved on it. Seed of the princess who awoke from death. So if we look at our three music boxes, basically what you need is kind of a working knowledge of fairy tales. The princess who woke from death was Snow White, Poisoned by an apple, but awoken by true love's kiss. This is the seat of the princess who fled at midnight. That would be Cinderella, having to leave the ball at midnight before her carriage turned back into a pumpkin and all that. And finally, we have the seat of the princess who spoke no words. That would be the little mermaid who gave up her voice in order to walk upon land to find her love. Thus, we've placed all three music boxes, and we can proceed. <laughs> 